Hey everybody, this is Brian Knowlton with HowToEarnMoney.tv. It doesn't matter if you've never made a dime online before. Through my step-by-step -step video tutorials and interviews with industry experts, I'm going to show you how you can make money online. Hey, this is Brian Knowlton. I'm here today with Gideon Shawick. He's an online entrepreneur and video marketing expert. Hey, Gideon, how are you doing? Hey, Brian, I'm good, thank you. Great. You know, I've always I've been watching your videos for years, and I'm always super impressed by the information that you deliver and the super high quality video content. Um, what you know? What really got you started in, in the whole video area? <laughs> Great question, um, Brian. It's 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 funny, you know, because it's um, when I started out, it wasn't like I I had this vision of of becoming a uh, you know, uh, an expert in, in the video, in online video space. Uh, you know, it all started for me about, mm, well, I guess five years ago when I, I pretty much got fed up with, uh, with my situation. I was in a sort of a cushy job, you know, earning a sort of a nice salary. And, uh, so life was pretty comfortable, but there was something not quite right, uh, with, the situation I, I had, I, I felt that there's there's more to life than the situation that I was finding myself in. For example, you know, I was working for a business, and I felt that I was, you know, working really hard and creating an asset for someone else that I wouldn't be able to take with with me when I left. Uh, you know, also when I'd stop working, I'd stop getting paid, and um, more importantly for me was that I, I didn't feel that I could really um, live out my passion. You know, live out what I really wanted to do. I always felt restrained, and I always felt yeah. sort of also restrained to a location. I always had to go to a location to um, to be able to earn money. Um, so so those sort of things were a bit of a, a, a problem for me. So one day I just sort of we had this discussion with my wife and I said, look, I, we need to make some sort of a change here. Um, I need to start a business. <laughs> you know, I need to start some yeah. sort of a business so I can do my own thing. And um, she was all keen. She said, "Well, let's let's do it." But um, you know, we discussed it. And we said, "Let's let's not do it here in, a, in in New Zealand where we were at the time. Let's uh, immigrate to Australia and and start the business over there because you know, not, whole idea of um, you know newly married couples with a new clean slate uh, starting in a new country, yeah. this sort of thing." And um, so we immigrated to Australia. Um, I I couldn't actually find a job uh, when when we uh, you know. Before we left, we you know we had to find a way to get in, and luckily my wife she was able to find a job really quickly. So she was working. I was um, kind of mucking around, just looking at business opportunities, and uh, you know I, I looked at a ton of different things. Uh, you know I even looked at uh, franchising franchises. You know buying a franchise type of business, uh -huh. um, and you know that didn't quite fit right. Uh, I looked at um, setting up my own little ice cream business, um, that didn't quite look right either. It just didn't look like it, it had the leverage within it. Um, and then I got introduced to uh, an internet-based uh, business or, you know, creating, creating your own products and selling your own products through the internet. And that looked really appealing because it, 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 you know, gave me everything that I was looking for. I, I could create my own products. I, I could be creative in my own right. Um, I could do what I wanted to do, and I could pretty much work from from anywhere uh, I wanted to, which was fantastic. So I, I, um, I started working just from um, uh, the lounge area in our in a little uh, uh, one bedroom apartment <laughs> in the center of Brisbane, and okay. um, and that's how the whole thing started for me. And but you know that was my f my introduction into the whole uh, internet based business uh, thing, and okay. it wasn't until about um, uh, about six months later, after I tried a few things out, I realized that I didn't know how to get traffic to to my sales pages, and I, I, I needed to figure something out. So I started interviewing some of the world's top internet marketers um, at, in, in, at the time. And uh, the thing that I did different back then was, this was five years ago, um, so I did it all on video. And if you say that today, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but five years ago, it was a big deal, especially for someone who didn't know anything about uh, video, let alone online video. <laughs> and so yeah. that was my whole introduction to it, and that's, you know, that um, got me interested in, in the whole online video thing, and I just uh, sort of built it from there. Wow. So, I mean, you, you just dove into it. Have you ever been an entrepreneur prior to getting started doing the online stuff? 
Um, not in a big way. I've, um, in, in our family, we always joke around, you know, my, my oldest brother, he's always been the entrepreneurial one. You know, he'd always be the one starting the businesses and I'd be the one sort of helping him out. So I've, there's always been that sort of entrepreneurial influence in, in my life. And I've always wanted to uh, start a business, but I just, you know, it took me a while to kind of wake up and to, to realize um, the sort of conditioning that's been happening um, throughout my life, you know, going through the education system. Don't get me started on that. But <laughs> through the Hi. education system, um, just got so conditioned into thinking that, um, you know, I didn't have anything special to offer through, through running my own business and that I had to find a job. And so, you know, actually, I, I went and did not just one degree. I did two degrees. I did a, an electronic engineering degree, and then I didn't think that I wanted to do engineering all my life. I wanted to work with people. And then... Yeah. Um, I did a, an engineering management degree, which was fantastic. I really loved that, and that, that got me into the management and, and, and business development roles. And so I, I actually worked for five years before um, you know, I was ready to start my own business. So I, I guess I've seen both sides now, you know, it's, which has been really cool because I've, I've been in my own business now for about five or six years, and uh, I've, I worked for five, uh, five years as well. So it's, it's kind of a, a balanced I'm at a balanced stage in my life right now. <laughs> yeah, that's great. What What were some of the things that you did from the um, beginning when you're trying to make an online income to just be able to survive and pay your bills? And you know, really, when you're getting started, what, how how did you start? Like, what niches did you pick, or did you do the whole AdWords stuff, just trying to make money with clicks, or you know, mm. where where did you begin? Well, I think uh, um, if we take a step back, even even uh, I guess uh, um, if we if we were to um, if, if we were to be able to look at it from a, a bit further distance, um, the the thing that I think is really key for starting out as an entrepreneur is uh, cash flow. You need some sort of source of cash so that you can just focus on on building up your business. And so that becomes the number one key question as you're starting out. How are you going to pay the bills? You know, just how are you going to pay the bills and how are you going to have enough money to invest in your business so that you can have something something going? Now, I was pretty much bootstrapping my business. Um, what I had going for me was, was really good. I had my wife, uh, Tina, because she was working at the time. So she was working full-time while I was mucking around. Um, and we also had um, five years' worth of, of savings that we could draw from if we needed to, so as sort of a, a backup. We, we made the promise that we, we never wanted to get into our, our savings. Um, and so the money that we used for cash flow was purely from, from my wife and, and the work she was doing. Um, so we paid the bills from that. And then um, I still had to figure out another um, source of cash flow to be able to just um, uh, get the business up and running. And the shortest um, route to cash that I found, other than <laughs> sending my wife off to work every day, um, yeah. as a sugar mommy, was to um, to get into consulting type of work. You know, where where I do work one on one type of work for other people. And the sort of stuff I did at the beginning was doing. Yeah, you know, I, I did people's websites. I did some copywriting right. for people. I did some graphics for people. I did some videos for people. Basically, anything that I could get my hand on, anything that I felt I, ha I had some sort of skill in. Um, you know, I would I would go to events and whatever, and, and um, meet people, and, and you know they'd, they'd have need for these sort of things, and you know, setting up new websites and this sort of stuff. And I'd just jump on it and say, "Well, I can help you with it." And, and that's how I started making a bit of initial cash, just to invest back into my business to give me that um, a bit of breathing space to start creating my own products and, and build my own business. Yeah, and, and you know, I always when I'm trying to teach other people how to make money online, or a family relative or a friend. Um, just telling them, you know, how they can kind of get started today, you know, where they need to start. That That is always a big issue. And luckily, most of the people, they have part-time jobs or if they're maybe even in semi-retirement, but they have some types of income coming in right now. Um, but what I really like, and I followed the same route when I got started, I was building websites and doing marketing, things along that line. And what I really like about um, one of your most recent products and, and the, one of the main reasons that I have you on today is because you put out that super comprehensive 92-page uh, rapid video blogging ebook. And I just have to tell you, when I read that, it was just amazing. 
information, just how much information you're giving away for free. You have a checklist in there and you have a few different strategies that people could use. And at the time I was thinking, you know, this information compiled with like, if someone wants to get started today and they know just a little bit about the internet, you could get into local search marketing or you could even do it for your employers or your boss, you know, mm -hmm. um, or you could do it for a friend full time. And if you just take the information from your um, rapid video blogging and put it towards like a local company that does contracting or painting or um, your employer that's in the area, if you took those same principles and applied it towards a local business, and you could even just go local to local stores that you might frequent or, you know, stores that you like that you feel that they need a better marketing presence on the internet. If you took the information from your book, I mean, you could dominate almost any industry locally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, in a way, uh, Brian, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that not more people have, have done it, you know, and that not more people are, are jumping on, on it and, and just going, wow, here's a he really huge opportunity to just dominate. And, and like you say, with, with the local uh, the local search engine type of approach, that, that is still a valid approach. Um, uh, but from a bigger point of view, uh, if, you, if you just want to target niches, there's still, um, you know, wide open areas where people can just, just dominate and... Um, you know, I see. I often, so often, see people uh, giving it a shot. You know, that without the right sort of knowledge and, and experience, and um, they're just like a shotgun approach, and it's, it's sort of all over the show. I just, I just helped someone recently that the, um, they had a massive launch, was um, very close to a seven-figure launch. Uh, you know, almost they made almost a million dollars uh, with with their launch. Uh, they had um, over two hundred and I think some something like two hundred thirty thousand. Uh, uh, subscribers uh, that they gained uh, through the launch, uh, but when I helped them with their little video, um, there was absolutely no uh, optimization for the keyword that they're trying to rank for, and so I just made a few small tweaks uh, to their, um, you know, the uh, the title, description, and tags, and a bit of other uh, optimization strategies, and now when you do the search for for the keyword that we, we we're trying to rank for, that video comes up um, on the first page of Google. And, uh, you know, it, it was a very competitive keyword. It's not even a, a funny brand name or anything like that. It was like um, regular everyday words that if you go and search wow. for them, you, you think, wow, that, that's pretty competitive. So that ranks number one on, on, on Google now, which is it's powerful, you know. So when, if you think about applying that sort of strategy to your niche and you can start ranking for some pretty cool keywords, um, you know, that has a ton of value. You know, uh, it's, it's like real estate. When you own a position on the first page of Google, it's like real estate. You own a piece of the Internet. And if, you're, if you go around it um, in, a, in a clever way, you can monetize that. You can, you can receive uh, rent payments from that real estate, so to speak, um, if, you, if you set it up in the right way. So it's, it's very powerful stuff once you know how to apply it right. Yeah, how, how do you get people... Um, to the point of like selecting a niche. I mean, what do you suggest people like when they're trying to figure out the direction they're thinking of going, but they're not really a hundred percent sure, you know, what, what do you usually recommend? Right. Um, that's a, um, that's a very cool question. And it's also a very, uh, it, it's, it's a relatively easy question to answer, but it's difficult to pull off, to pull off correctly. Um, selecting your niche is, uh, you know, the most important thing, um, I think, for the success of your online business. Uh, when you select a niche, for example, that um, will never, that doesn't have the attributes of being a profitable niche, then you could work very, very difficult, uh, sorry, very, very hard and uh, never make any money from it, even if you get a, a big following. If it's not the kind of niche where people want to spend money in, then, and, and your um, goal is to make money from it, well, then you know, you're going to really struggle. So the first question to ask yourself is, is who? You know, who are you trying to target? Who is your target customer, your target audience? And um, that's very, very important. Um, and you may not have a clear answer on that until you do the second, second step. Um, which is is to identify through um, 
through through the hedgehog concept uh, from from Jim Collins to try and figure out what is your hedgehog concept. And once you have that that very clear, um, it also becomes clear who your target audience is. It's sort of an iterative process where you, you go backwards and forwards. But the hedgehog concept, really, what it consists of is is three things in in helping you select your your main focus, and you can apply this to your niche as well. So the first the first area that you got to look at is your area of passion. You know, in in each of our lives, there are a ton of things we're passionate about. For example, I'm I'm passionate about say talking on the phone. I'm passionate about uh, video cameras. I'm passionate about hanging out with my friends, or you know, going for a swim in the ocean. Um, but there's going to be one of those things that um, will eventually help me make money. All right, so but just just keep that in mind. So that's the first area. You, you basically try and figure out what, what are the things that you're truly passionate about because you've got to do something that you're passionate about. Otherwise, you're going to lose interest over time. And um, if, this, if you're competing against someone else who is passionate about that topic and you're not, then they'll outperform you every single time. So that's the first thing. So, so figure out what are your areas of passion. Um, the second thing you've got to look at is what can you become really good at? You know, wh- what do you already have a skill in or uh, what can you build a skill in so that you could become one of the best in the world? And once again, you've you got to line it up with your area of passion. So um, that's very important. It's no good you're just passionate, uh, passionate about something but you're no good at it or you, you never really have um, the ability to, to build a, a skill in that area. So that's very, very important to look at that, that second area as well. And then the third area is, is the, you know, the money area, how to make money from it. Or the, as Jim Collins talks about it um, in his great book, uh, Good to Great, your profit per X. You know, how are you going to make money from, the, from this? And, right. and within that uh, sphere – You've got to um, ask some more specific questions like um, who is it that you're targeting? Like um, how many of them are there online and do they actually have money? Are there, so are there enough of them and do they have money? Can they, can they um, you know, if you target them, can they actually, would they actually be interested in, in buying products and services from you and spending money with you or buying advertising, whatever? So you've got those three there. So if you can, if you can align whatever you're uh, passionate about and you can build a skill in it and you can also make money from it, uh, that becomes a, a really um, a sweet spot for your business, and right. you know it's, that's not an easy thing to um, to figure out necessarily. It, it takes time to to really do that analysis and to be, get really clear on uh, what it is for you personally, but also for your business. And they can they can be the same thing. They can also be different. Um, right. But uh, what I recommend is you know for, for everybody to think carefully about you know ask themselves the questions: Is is it something that you're doing now? Is it is it uh, the, the niche that you're targeting is it something that you're passionate about? Can you, or are you already very skillful in this area? And and can you actually make money from it? You know, ask yourself those three questions, and and that'll really help you hone in on your sweet spot. And once you have that sweet spot, you just really drill into it as as deep and far and hard as you can, and eventually that that's going to be the thing that's going to drive your business. Right. Yeah. One one of the things that I did. Um, a few years back was I created a blog. I've, I've always been looking to make different ways on ways to make money online. And I've done it all. You know, I've been around for 20 years. I've started selling on Usenet and I was one of those guys that were pretty much throwing stuff all over every single wall to see what would stick. Mm. And half of the time, you know, it would hit and be okay. And other times it would just fail and be a waste of my time. Mm. Um, but over the years I got better at, you know, targeting a different niche and really identifying things that I could add value and give people that information and they'd be willing to pay for it or I'd make money through affiliate sales, things along that line. Um, I became a real estate appraiser throughout that period of time. And at first I started blogging about it a little bit, but I was just being the hardcore salesman mentality, just selling, 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 selling. I wasn't putting in any of my passion into that blog. But once I started showing my passion for the industry and sharing my uh, experiences and my concerns and um, just putting information out there, people really lit up. And I got a little following of other appraisers just looking forward to my information. And eventually, I was able to monetize it through information products and uh, selling products and services that 
health appraisers. So that's one of the things I kind of always do too when I'm trying to help someone to identify a niche. Is it could be their current employment or their line of business or a hobby or you know things along that you need to find all. You need to make sure that all that other criteria is met. Otherwise, you could be really wasting your time and money. I mean, I uh, I'm really into let's say like meteorite hunting. And I think it might be a great niche website to uh, provide information and sell products and things along that line. But at the same time, I know I won't be passionate enough to make it a full-time commitment where I could eventually monetize on something like that. Mm. You know? Yeah, so, there's, there's, there's two models. I mean, the, the model that I personally follow and, and, and like and, and teach also um, is is this – this authority uh, presence type of model, which is, you know, this is the way you do it. You figure out what is what is your niche, what is what is your sweet spot, and you basically ignore everything else. You just focus all your resources on the sweet spot. That's that's the one approach and, and the one that I've been using. But there's another one that works as well, of course, where where you um, you don't necessarily select anything that that you're particularly passionate about or good at or that you can make money from, but you rather you you look at um, other niches where um, where it's more about you know looking at, at different smaller opportunities I guess and you create you become a you become more of a um, systems setup person where you set up these different systems to target different niches and so you might have ten or twenty or thirty or forty different niches uh, and that becomes an you know more of a niche marketing type of approach and that approach works too you know someone like um, uh, Adam Short from, from Niche Profits Classroom uh, teaches that, and, and they have some some very successful case studies too. Uh, for me personally, though, I, I I prefer doing the you know the one where it's something that I'm personally passionate about and that I can build an authority in. And you know, I, I think over the long run it does pay off if you can pull it off right. Um, if, for example, my own authority blog, just my at my name GideonShelg.com, um, is you know ranks pretty well now for some some very key keywords. One of them is online video marketing. Last time I checked on, on the global scale on the global Google search, I was number one. You know I rank wow. really well for uh, how to get more views on YouTube, uh, for web video production. I'm on the first page of Google, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now so I've, I've got all these nice keywords that I'm ranking for now um, that I've been able to build up because I've had this laser focus on on my sweet spot. Yeah, and that's amazing. So within the past like five years you most likely were, weren't a video expert at any point. I mean, at that point, but over that period of five years, you've become the video marketing expert. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's only really been the last uh, one or two years that I've really been focusing on, on the video marketing expert sort of branding side of things. And so I, I think it just shows you that um, it's, you know, it's, it's possible to target anything and, and become good at it. You know, if you just push hard enough and long enough at it. Um, yeah. But in, in saying that, you've, you've got to be um, clever about also selecting that right niche. I mean, I could have also selected other niches if I wanted to. You know, that other niches that I'm passionate about and that I could build a, a skill in and that I could make money from. For example, I'm I'm really uh, you know I really enjoy um, music and and for example. Um, Playing the piano, not that I'm any good. I, I started learning when I was 28, <laughs> and soon after I, we immigrated and I started my business, so I gave that up. So uh, I never pursued that, but you know, that could be a, a potential niche that I could pursue as well. You know, the, the niche of uh, piano playing, and perhaps I could become a piano teacher one day if I focus on that and then become really good at it. You know, right. there, there would be some money in there. Um, uh, but you know, I decided to go for the online video marketing one for now. <laughs> but I, yeah. I think it just points out that you know, there's there's plenty of things you can do in your life. Um, you just gotta go search for them and find the best one. Yeah, well, you're doing a, a great job for sure. I, I really appreciate your videos. You know, it's uh, it's really opened my eyes to a lot of different aspects. I've always been a big time marketing guy and love marketing. I'm very passionate about marketing. Um, so when it started coming to blogging and that whole market opened up, I was interested in it and got involved, but I didn't really know the whole thing about showing your passion and showing that you're an expert. I was still in sales mode from my college experience as well. Mm. Um, but you know, I, as time changes, 
I mean, with the changes to going towards the video blogging and creating videos and using videos for marketing, what, how do you think that has really changed the industry in, in different ways to make money online? Is there any like specific video, I mean, specific benefits to using video over just like text or text marketing versus video marketing or text blogging versus video blogging? What's the benefits? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I think there are huge benefits and you just got to look at some of the trends and statistics to, to sort of, uh, point you in the right direction and to, to make you realize this, this, you know, there's been huge stuff happening in, in the online video space. I just got an email from, from YouTube, uh, yesterday because, um, they've sent an email out to all their partners and, um, last time I checked before that email, um, they were, they were saying that they're uploading, they're getting, around about 48 hours worth of video uploaded every minute. Now, in this oh, email, they just sort of, you know, um, uh, informally stated, yeah, they, they're now getting about 60 hours worth of video uploaded every minute, which is just, it's incredible, you know. And um, the last time I checked, it was 3 billion views a day that they're getting on, on YouTube. It's probably more now. Maybe it's 4 billion. I don't know, <laughs> because it seems to change so quickly and it increases so yeah. quickly. And I, I think that alone should wake people up if they're not woken up yet that um, there's been huge stuff, uh, huge developments in the online video space. And um, and if you're not using video on, on your website, uh, then you're losing out. It's just as simple as that. You're losing out. Um, video is, as far as I can tell, uh, the best way for building a connection with your audience and, and for, for getting to people, for getting people to, to really kind of get to know you or know the, the people behind the website. You know, it's, it's no more about the big corporate sort of stuff. You know, people want to interact with a real person and they want to see a real person on the other side. And the best way of doing that is with video. Um, you know, I, I think another real key benefit of, of video that's an outcome of that is that um, if people like, know, and trust you uh, through watching your videos and, and through you giving them great content and, and building that relationship, well, the chances of them, uh, you know, later on purchasing your products or services or advertising that you might have on your site just skyrockets. It just goes through the roof. Your conversion rates for your offers just shoot through the roof compared to just traditional text-based type of websites. And, you know, I think this one of the other reasons why social media is so, so, uh, so, so powerful and so uh, popular too is because of that, that connection that you can have with people. And, uh, well, certainly from my point of view, I think video is, is the best way, online video is the best way for, um, for building that connection with your audience. Yeah, I could really see that. I mean, I've, I've, when I've added videos to my blogs just where I'm introducing myself and kind of either telling a little bit about my story or why I'm doing this website, you know, people could really connect with that. And you can get a lot of trust just from a video. You know, people could hear it in your voice that you're not out to try to rip them off or um, present a scam product or something. They could kind of really see and hear it. Um, that you're passionate about what you're talking about. And yeah, when, whenever I've been able to implement video, when it was called for conversions, either people signing up to a newsletter for more information or purchasing products have gone through the roof. I mean, mm. it's a nice day. Mm. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I think there are, um, that's, there are three areas now that I really think about it. There's, there's, there are three main areas, the three main benefits I think that, that video can offer uh, uh, any business really, online or, or offline. Um, the one we've already talked about is the whole conversion thing. Uh, another one that I've alluded to is the traffic thing. You know, traffic is the name of the game in uh, online business, well, traffic and conversions. Um, and if you're using a site like YouTube, if you use it intelligently, you can use that as a traffic source to your own web assets, your own websites, your blog, your squeeze pages, whatever you, what you have online. Um, it's just a tremendous source of access, uh, um, uh, traffic. And, and then the third area is, is that of, um, uh, increased, uh, perceived value that you can provide through video products. So you've got, you've got your traffic. Sort it that you know you can get traffic through YouTube and other uh, video sharing sites. You can convert that traffic really well with your videos because you're using video. You can increase your conversion rate, 
Um, and then, of course, you can, you can create this, this massive increase in perceived value by creating video products. So traffic, conversion, and products. Um, so those three things, uh, I think, um, are huge benefits that online video can, uh, can offer us. And it's, it's really amazing, especially with, you know, you go right into Google, and now right in the results, you get those video results right there. And for things that you'd never be able to rank in your lifetime for, you could have your face on the first page of Google talking about a product or service. It's, it's amazing time. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I love it. Yeah, in, in, in your report, you had, um, you gave an example about one of the products that you did with a friend regarding the magic, what was that? Yeah, the Free Magic Live project. Yeah, yeah the Free Magic Live. How did that influence the project? Or was that the main, did you use video marketing as the number one source of traffic? Oh, absolutely. Um, just, just as the, uh, just a, a bit of extra information. That, uh, that's um, so that business. I left that business about a, a year and a half ago. So um, I'm not privy to their current information. But um, the what happened was um, the project that I did before uh, the, the Free Magic Life project was um, the Become a Blogger project with uh, another one of my business partners, Yara Starak. And that was a very successful uh, project. It was all uh, a video-based uh, blog uh, training. It, it showed people how to set up their own blogs through, through little uh, online videos. And, and to my knowledge, I think we were the first video-based training course on, on, on blogging in, in the world. And it, it went really, really well. We just re relaunched that a few weeks ago, actually, and went really well again. But... Um, through that project, uh, you know, we had a lot of people saying or making comments along the lines of, yeah, 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 it's cool you guys teaching how to make money online uh, and making money from that, uh, but show us how to make money online from topics and niches other than the online make, uh, making money online niche. And so I saw that as a real challenge. I thought, okay, well, uh, let's see if I can pick a uh, you know, niche like the magic niche, for example, and... Um, apply some of the strategies that I've learned throughout the years uh, on YouTube to set up a new niche, a new, new, a new brand, uh, to get traffic, to create products, and to convert that traffic into sales for those products. And so that, um, that's how uh, Free Magic Live got started. So I teamed up with a, a local magician. His name is uh, JJ. Um, he was the star on the videos. Uh, I was, uh, you know, did everything behind the scenes for the, the marketing and the video marketing. And, uh, you know, very quickly we built that business up uh, to have uh, a pretty big following. Um, and, uh, you know, last when I was last time involved, it was, they were sitting at about 50,000 um, email uh, subscribers for that business, which was, you know, tremendous. And most of the traffic for that business came wow. through YouTube, um, which was just incredible. Um, now, I think this is a bit of a disclaimer, that's so what I'm saying. I haven't been involved in the business for a year and a half, but last, late last year, and this is an interesting lesson that I, I think is worth mentioning. Um, that channel for Free Magic Live, the original Free Magic Live channel, um, got, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, closed down by YouTube. It was a very wow. sad moment for me because it's a little, the baby that I started and, uh, and, and let loose. And, and then that channel got closed down. Now, as I said, I'm not privy to the information um, and, and, and what's been happening in the business over the last year and a half, um, but it got shut down. And, and, and I think, um, you know, there's, there's nothing, it didn't get shut down because of anything that I did. Um, but I think the lesson there is that it's important for you to build your own asset. You know, so you can look at YouTube as a massive traffic generation source, but don't see it as your only asset that you're building. Sure, you build your presence on YouTube, but what you've got to do is redirect that traffic to your own online assets, to your own email database, build your own email database. So when that channel got um, closed down, uh, you know, JJ still had an email list of 50,000 people. Wow. So he still had his following, you know, which was uh, tremendous. So that meant that he could start a new channel or, or keep on going with, with his uh, newsletter uh, without too much of a hiccup. So, um, so you know, I, th I think it was a, a great lesson. But, yeah, that was a, a fantastic project to, to sort of show what's possible on, on YouTube. And it was, you know, so I used it as a case study within the report as well. Yeah, and that's great. And, you know, while we were 
chatting, I just pulled it up really quick. Uh, just did a quick search for free magic tricks. And still, even with that happening, it's, it's like position number six out of 11 million results. So those videos must have really helped that his website, you know, to get such high rankings as well. So that's amazing. Oh, yeah, that's, um, I remember that's one of the keywords we, we uh, optimized for. Um, and, yeah, there were a ton of competition for that, just for free magic tricks. That was, um, yeah, and I, I noticed Free Magic Live, the, the website, obviously that's still still going. Um, yeah, that's, that's on the, the first page of Google Store, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's great. Do you, um, have you worked on any other projects like that or any case studies like that recently? Uh, not recently. So, so uh, for the last um, two years or so, I've, I've been just focusing on my own business. Uh, you know, building the the rapid video blogging brand and the um, uh, the Gideon Shalvik brand. So, um, just just sort of been chilling out, I guess, a little bit, um, <laughs> and and just building building up uh, some of my own brands um, and and leveraging off of previous work that I, that we did for uh, become a blogger, for example. Um, but yeah, no, no big projects in that particular area uh, uh, very recently. But I, um, I might, I might consider doing something again in the next year or so. We'll see. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting to see all that type of stuff, and when you actually see everything being implemented. I mean, I love implementing your stuff just as I get it, and your free videos are great. And I've bought a couple of your products before in the past. How many? Like, do you have? What are your different products that you have out there right now and can you get them from the Gideon Shawwick.com? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't uh, massively promote my products at the moment. They're probably the main one is the, the killer YouTube strategies one that, that people can get just when they uh, sign up through my, my normal um, autoresponder sequence, either at rapidvideoblogging.com or, or at my site at Gideon Um But yeah, I've got a, I've got a ton of products um, that, that, you know, that goes into a whole bunch of different areas. There's one on you know, how to outsource your video production. There's one on, on list building and creating viral reports. Um, there's one on, on creating uh, products really quickly using video. Um, there's one on uh, money-making membership sites, and there's one on, on, on how to launch your, your own product as well. So a um, ton of different products um, that, that I've got out there. And then, of course, the, you know, the, the big rapid video blogging course, which sells for about 2000 bucks. Um, wow. so yeah, this, uh, and I think just, just as you go, you know, you just, you just, uh, become more knowledgeable in your area and you create more products as you go. But, um, yeah, this year is, is a big year for me to, um, to, to look at, you know, doing something new. I haven't launched a new product of my own for about a year now. And so, uh, I might, um, you might see something coming out a bit later on this year. Oh, that's great. So right now, um, if, if you were talking to someone that, you know, has maybe, done a little bit of stuff online or maybe they haven't out of your products because i'm th that rapid video blogging i love that that's just <laughs> that's an amazing idea but at the same time that become become a blogger is really exceptional um where what what would you suggest to someone that's really kind of getting started though because i you your jv opportunity one was great for me um, but I think that's more towards geared towards people that have experience online right now. Um, what would you suggest for a, a newbie looking to make money online and looking to learn? Not, I don't want to put say that that 92 page report won't teach you almost everything you need to know. Um, and that's the whole reason for the interviews that if I have to have my viewers go to your website and download that report because that's amazing. And that's at rapidvideoblogging.com. And the checklist in there, I mean, it's just amazing. You could really use it from the beginning to the end. And by the time you get to that end of, of the report, you should have a fully functioning video blog going. Absolutely. And, yeah, I mean, that's why I wrote the report, just to give people a, a quick a quick start guide, you know, to 
give them a, a really nice overview, but you know, obviously enough information so that they can actually go out and get results for themselves without buying any more products and, and, and services. You know, so that's that's the way I wanted to structure that report, and that's why it's 92 pages long. It really it gives you a, a ton of really valuable information, and that probably is a great place to get started if you if you if you do enjoy video or the idea of video and um, and, and you like the idea of YouTube and getting a ton of traffic and, and creating video products and selling those video products online. I, th I think that that's a, a great place to start. Well, that's, that's great information. And thanks again, Gideon, for coming on and doing this interview with me. And again, if, if they want to find out more about you, um, where should they go? What's the number one place? Uh, well, if they want to report, uh, just rapidvideoblogging.com, or uh, I might, I'm sure you might have uh, your own link for that um, somewhere on, on the page where you're going to host this uh, recording, yes. uh, Brian. Um, and uh, if, if you just want to go to my blog, it's just my name, gideonshalwick.com, and you'll there's a bunch of more more free stuff there as well. All right, Gideon, well, great. Thanks again, and I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Thanks, Brian, and all the best for your, uh, your ventures that your boss blows. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that episode. You know, I've been receiving a lot of really good comments and questions off of my website about how to earn money. So what I'd like you to do, if you're interested, is send me an email. You know, any questions, comments, and I will be answering any type of questions and answering the comments in my upcoming shows. So just visit, visit the website here, submit your information, and I'm gonna be answering those for you. Um, another great thing is a lot of people have been going into iTunes and rating my show in there. I'm not sure if you're watching it on iTunes or YouTube or Roku, but in iTunes, you know, you just log in, give me a five-star rating, or is it five stars or is it three? I'm not sure, find out. Um, just go there and rate my show and put in a comment there. That really helps me out, get more exposure and able to bring more shows to you. Same thing with Roku. Just go to the title screen for the show, rate me in there, and that just brings in more viewers. So I really appreciate that. Really helps me out a lot. And if you're looking for that WordPress hosting, want to get a WordPress website up instantly, go to mybluehosting.com. Send me the information if you'd like and I'll install your WordPress blog for you. So thanks again for spending your time with me, and until next time, just do it.